Hello everyone and welcome to day six of Photoshop. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be demonstrating how it is you're gonna take an object and create an opposite shadow. And so we'll start off, I'm gonna be using a dog and a wolf. Uh, I found this one online. Uh, this one's gonna be rather easy to manipulate because it has a white background. Uh, the first thing though I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to need to extend this canvas. So what that means is I need to go under image, I need to go to canvas size. And again, I'm going to, uh, changes from pixels to inches. So right now you can see the height is 7.63. So I'm thinking that maybe like 12 inches is gonna be fine. And then when, you're, when you have the canvas size window open, you'll wanna take the dot that appears by default in the middle and you wanna drop it down to south. Okay, so if that's north, that's east, that's south, that's, we go to south. Hit okay, that's gonna cause this to expand. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna use my paint bucket. So you tap G or you go over to the side and if it shows up as the gradient, you're gonna hit G again. But as you can see, what I've got is I've got black on top if you look down here at the colors. So I'm gonna to need to switch that. I can hit X and then all I need to do is to tap and that will fill it there. The next thing you need to do is you find a silhouette. Now the thing about uh, adding a shadow is shadows are oftentimes most convincing if they have a diffused edge or they're a little bit blurry. And so we wanna take that into account. Now, as I type in wolf silhouette, I'm gonna get a lot of hard edged designs, graphics. And so I'm gonna to need to then deal with that. So uh, let's go over here and I've already opened it. I'm gonna go control A, control C, and then I'm gonna to go to my small doc. I'm gonna hit control V, which pastes it. And next I need to do, next I need to remove the white background. So I'm gonna hit W, control X is gonna cut that out. And then what I'll do is I'm going to hit control D for deselect. I'm going to grab my marquee tool and I'm just going to create a fence around that and hit control X. And then I'll need to work with opacity. So I'm going to move the wolf kind of behind the dog. I'm going to then resize the wolf. So I go edit free transform. And then I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to scale this up and I'm going to situate it in a place where I feel like, oh, the, the, it will work. I'm gonna hit enter to lock it in. And the next thing I need to do is I'm gonna change uh, the opacity. So I'll go over here to layers palette. I'm gonna then move that down and I will then figure out a way to situate it behind the smaller dog. So I'm gonna cut the background out of the smaller dog. So I hit W three times to get wand. Okay, and I'm gonna select the background. And there we go. And the next thing I'm gonna do is on this background layer, I'm actually gonna just do a solid fill. So again, I hit G for the paint bucket, okay, or gradient, hit G twice. And then I'm going to make sure that white is on top and I'm then going to drop it. Okay, so I've got a background layer. This is just, I'm gonna label this white. And I can see through the thumbnails what the other two are. So next what I'll do is I'll bring the small dog on top. So I'm going to move it in the layers palette. So the small dog is on top. And uh, as you can see from this image, I've got what's called a white halo happening around the, around the dog. So I'm going to try to uh, remove that. And we haven't talked about this yet, but to remove it, you're going to do what's called feathering. And so I will go over here to the wand tool again. Uh, make sure that you're on the small dog layer, and then I'm going to select the inverse, okay? So remember again, inverse starts with I, so uh, I'm going to do control shift I, okay, selects the inverse. And then to get the feather, which is going to remove this haloing, I'm going to go under select, I'm going to go to modify, and I'm going to go to feather. This window will appear, and uh, this is, you know, feathering one pixel. I usually start up around three pixels. Uh, and you're just gonna kind of play by ears. You know, if it works, great. If it doesn't hit control Z, go back, you know, either bump it up to five or bump it down to two, whatever's gonna happen. And then you hit control X, the dog disappears. It's leaving the halo behind. I'm gonna hit control V, um, you know, and that maybe it left a little bit too much. So maybe I will go up to five. So I'm gonna hit control Z. And I will then again, go under, go under select, go under modify, go to feather, and I'm gonna change this up to five. I hit okay. 
and then I'm going to hit Control X and I'm going to hit Control V. Uh, that looks a lot cleaner. And I will also need to uh, consider what's going to happen here with the floor that the dog is sitting on. I think what I'll do is I will just simply move the shadow of that area. Uh, maybe I'll do a free transform here and just make it a little bit smaller so it fits in the frame. I won't have to deal so much with it. Yeah, let's see. Maybe I can turn it so it's going the other way. Yeah, that's going to work. Okay, and I'll hit enter. Then what I'm going to be doing is I can go under opacity, change that a little bit softer, so subtle, and pushes it farther back. And the other thing, too, I'm going to do is I can blur this shadow. So you go under filter, you're going to go under blur, and uh, the most common blurring You've got you know six seven options here. The most common blurring technique is called the Gaussian blur or the Gaussian blur. Okay, so I hit Gaussian blur. I'm going to slide this window aside. As you can see already, you know it significantly reduced that sharp edges, and by doing so, it's going to make it a little bit more convincing. Uh, and then I hit OK. And the last stage of this process, I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean up the area around the feet here with the eraser tool. So I'm going to in and make sure that I'm on the dog layer. And I'm going to change the opacity of the eraser down to maybe something like that. Maybe I'll en enlarge the eraser a bit, change the hardness to soft. Okay, so that it's a little bit there. Do you guys see how that works? Okay, so I changed the eraser size. I changed the hardness of the eraser. And uh, by doing so, I'm saving myself a lot of work because you could come in here and manually cut that out, but it would take forever. And so this is just kind of a quick and dirty way of making that happen. Um, and then I will crop it down. So I'm going to grab tap C for crop. And that's the project. Hey, thanks for joining me. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you come up with. See you guys. Bye.